Hello, everybody, and welcome to stream. Today, we're going to be continuing the event. I was originally going to change to a different thing for today's stream, but that didn't work out. So I'm streaming this again. Anyways, let's get to it. And map. Oh, I am actually supposed to go down this way. This is a pain in the ass. Yeah, how come it's visible now? Ooh, that's a memory fragment. this about I don't understand most of what you said but I believe you because you bear a special scent what are these different versions of my memory possibilities for the future different observation results um sorry I still don't get it so which of them is real to me none of them are but to that person all of them are then for me, all of them are real too. These are my realities. The existence of that person is my reality. I was just gonna check something out. Uh, yeah, Luna is, if I had to say, one of the ones that is the most loving. Slash, I guess you could say obsessed to a degree. What's this? It's a teleporter. Need power gloves to move the box, okay. Which I can't get the freaking power gloves because I don't have the thing for it. The tracking level. And I can't get the tracking level till I complete that one mission. Following Himiko, we arrived at the suburban wasteland where an abandoned house stood conspicuously out of place. Himiko, are you sure this is the right place? It seems deserted around here. I can't be wrong. Each time the hour strikes, I can hear the sound of a clock chime coming from this direction. This building seems to be the entrance to an underground cellar. If my instincts are on point, there should be a large space underneath. The wine cellar. Now it's coming back to me. This place should be the grandest garden in Sapphire. Garden? But isn't this place a wine cellar? Flowers can be used for winemaking, don't you know? All their beverages are actually brewed from flowers grown on their premises. The owner's crafted red rose wine is truly exquisite, and their coconut flower wine with its sweet and tangy, refreshing taste, plus a subtle coconut fragrance. Uh... Sorry, it's been quite a while since I've been around alcohol. Being in a wine cellar all of a sudden has caught me off guard. <laughs> Never mind me. Miss Himiko is so adorable, don't you think? Back to the matter at hand. Going by the previously heard chimes, the second pendulum clock could be situated within this cellar. Let's go and have a look.
か。Yeah, you're asking people again. That worked out so good for you last time. Can I ask who are, you are? Why are you sneaking around in my grandfather's old wine cellar? I, I, Romeo, will uphold my family's dignity and expel you from this place. Sorry, but we have no ill intentions. We're simply searching for an item and we'll leave as soon as we find it. Searching for something? I used to clean up the cellar and I'm about to have it renovated. What might you be seeking? Did you all... Sir, have you come across an item resembling a pendulum clock? Ah, oh, yes, I've seen it. I was quite puzzled because it appeared to be rather valuable. It wasn't listed on the two cell list my grandfather provided. That's great to hear, sir. I believe that's what we're looking for. Would you be kind enough to lead us to it? Oh, that won't do. Since it's from our family's wine cellar, doesn't its ownership rightfully ours? Wait, you're not going to make us go through an application process, are you? That won't be necessary. If you want to help me gather a particularly flower from the mountains, I'd make a trade to with you. He's lying. I see. I have to come from the other direction. Uh, map. How am I supposed to get there then? Because I have to get there to get the flower, but. I can't go that way. Oh, yes I can. It's just a pain in the ass. Yeah, this is a... Uh... This is a puzzle. There's a freaking dragon in the way. Of course there's a dragon in the way. And then it's Parvat. Or no, get, that's Ganesha. I didn't realize it wasn't the deep blue that Parvati is. And then ultimate. Okay. 
now the dragon's dead. I can go in this area. And grab this. If he doesn't accept the trade now, I want to just murder him. Here's the flower you want. Thank you. It's just as beautiful as I thought. Whenever I laid my eyes on it, I had the urge to pluck it and use it as a proposal gift for her. It would cross my mind. Sadly, I never managed to succeed. I promised her that I'd find her after sunset, putting that up by then, the mist would have dissipated. I know she must remember our promise. Can he also remember what he promised us? What do I remember its location, how it looks? This should be the first time I see this flower. What are you brooding over? Why don't we open the door to the wine cellar for us? Sorry, I was just a bit too carried away with this excitement. Well, since you fulfilled your promise... It's time for me to fulfill mine. I'll unlock the door for you right away. Okay. Oh, this is gonna suck. There's two ways they can come from. I'm willing to bet the third one's gonna have it all three directions. Tracker. It's your turn now. As the drones flew to the top of the pendulum clock, the ominous growls from monsters started to echo around. Tch. Seriously? Do they have to show up every time? Likewise, I'm counting on you again this time. Keep them occupied for just a bit longer and it'll be done soon. Yeah, that's a simple thing, at least. I expected that to be much more difficult with two of them. Nice and easy. Trackers, you've done a good job. It's not nice at all. I'm so tired. Yeah, kids do get tired easily. Who are you calling kids? Huh? Ahem. You've also noticed, haven't you? The number of enemies is increasing. Just as Himiko predicted. Doesn't that mean that we're going the right way? The emergence of these monsters is a direct result of us disrupting the loop. They seek to eliminate us as external factors and restore the proper course of the loop. It seems we need to pick up the pace, Miss Himiko. Could you take us to the third pendulum clock now? Certainly. The third pendulum clock is likely situated within Sapphire's auction house. Let's go. Much obliged. Okay, I need to click that because it's actually starting to annoy me. And teleport. So as soon as I can get the bubble gun, I can clear that. I can't step on more than three grass. I see.
I have to get myself into a corner when the grass blows. to the city. I just need to check something real quick. Yeah, I can't just straight up go there from here. Got it. Don't look at me like that. I'm ready. You promised me to send me to the bubble universe where that person is drifting. I still have unkept promises. I'd even say a proper goodbye. That person always saw me at my worst. I won't tell the truth. That's too cruel. Besides, the sudden appearance of someone who should have died will only raise suspicion, won't it? I made up my mind. I told that person I'm a vampire locked at the bottom of the pyramid. Completely different being. I want to create a brand new encounter. A ca an encounter that's beautiful and full of smiles. This time, I want that person to see me at my best. So I beg you, let me see that person again. Northwest corner of the orchard. Wait, that means it's further down. And map. It's up. I'm going down because I want to see if I can't spawn any chests, though. Level up and obtain power gloves. Got it. So, I guess... Wait. Oh, this is the building. Oh. Trespasser alert. As expected, the pendulum clock is inside, but the security is quite tight. It's an auction house, after all. It has a vast collection of invaluable treasures. Is it possible to disable it using technology? You mean hacking into the system? Sure, but the security meshes are highly intricate. Unless we find a back door, hacking in might take a whole day. But if we're unable to disable the pendulum clock here, the security system will reset with the loop by the next day. Bingo! Technology isn't all powerful after all. Uh, game? Uh, my game just glitched out on me. Let's hope I can teleport. Okay, I can get back now. So that was what's supposed to happen. Oh, what have I just heard? Are you guys planning to break in and steal something? A boy in a black hooded cloak suddenly interjected into our conversation. You heard it wrong. That's not what we're doing. No worries. I'm Abelard. An expert in hacking. Listen up. I'll now tell you about the back door that can incapacitate the security system. So you actually want to join us. Let me make it clear. I'm not engaged in any theft. I'm here solely to share some intel with you in exchange for a little favor. What do you want? It's actually quite simple. I just need you to visit the bookstore and grab a comic book for me. 
I've been eager to read his final chapter for quite some time. Then just go buy it yourself. It's a bit embarrassing to admit, but the comic book author kept delaying the lease. The disjointed plot points really got on my nerves. So I couldn't hold my back and ended up venting my frustration at the bookstore. The store manager got so upset that they closed the store. You're really into comics, huh? So where should we go to buy that comic book for you? Well, the plaza nearby is a gathering spot for comic book enthusiasts. Right now, I happen to have a copy of The Vampire Knight and the Human Princess in my possession. Take this book with you and exchange it with them. You'll surely be able to get what I want in return. Why don't you go there yourself? Given that I've stirred up enough trouble to get that bookstore closed, won't showing up there just make me a target for a beating from fellow comic book enthusiasts? You have a point. Alright then, it's just a comic book after all. We'll bring it back for you. Remember, the comic book you're looking for is Pick Squad Epic. Finally, I'm released from not being able to move. Okay, that's the day, moon, whatever. Okay. And I give this book to this guy. And I give this book to this guy. Why do I get two? After handing the comic book to Abelard, who's absolutely thrilled, he couldn't contain his excitement as he crouched down by the street, flipping through the pages one by one. Abelard, so can you now tell us how to tackle the security system? The supervillain, the hero just vanished without explanation. What? The story's suspended here again? I'm not accepting this. Abelard, as if drained of strength, crumbled to the ground, gazing skyward and releasing a profound, pained lament that echoed with anguish. I kind of regret giving him that comic book now. Abelard, I do sympathize with your sorrow, but I really need to know how to disable the security system of the auction house. Have you not seen how miserable I am? Why are you still interrogating me at this moment? You're so cold-blooded. It appears that employing some unconventional means to soothe his pain is in order. Trackers, get ready. No need for that. Don't know why. But all the pain has gone away now. For some unknown reason, Abelard suddenly regained his vigor, springing back to life like the devil. Come here, I'll tell you. Get closer. I don't want others to overhear us. Just say it. My computer's already been connected. At which level can I find the back door? It's okay in the corner of the plaza. Pulling the switch will cut off the power. If no power, the system will be paralyzed. I'm heading there now to cut the power for you. So your solution is to simply trip the switch. How can the security system not have a power off protection? Can it really work? Of course I did once before. It seems like I might have slipped up. You didn't hear anything, right? Fine. We'll trust you. Let's see. There's three of them indeed. Let's hope this is the last time. The menacing growls emanate from the shadows of the vault. We'll take it from here. So... Finally a challenging one. I say, and then it's not even challenging at all. Oop.
Like, really, you have three of them, but they're not sending them at the same time. That could be much more difficult. Click. Done. Finally, the third one is taken care of as well. This should be the last one, right? Hooray! No tech, I have to mute myself for a second. And I'm back. We really did it. Hmm. Not bad. Brony. Why are you gazing at the panel? After this pendulum clock stopped, Sapphire seems to have undergone some peculiar changes. What is it? I was a little concerned about the high wall we encountered earlier, so I dispatched drones to keep an eye on it. At least now, the unreasonable obstacles we ran into on the map have all disappeared. In other words, Sapphire might be undergoing some changes that we didn't expect. Like areas that were previously inaccessible are now open to us? Exactly, especially the fog that previously blocked our path to the forest is gone. Okay, I'm trying to do a single mission here. I'm trying to do it to increase. Oh. Map. I really just want to do the thing so we can unlock stuff. What is this place? Just a moment ago, a surge of energy, similar to magic, teleported us here. Teleportation? I actually feel more like we've returned to the starting point of a loop. Rita, are you suggesting that once we got here, we got, became trapped in a loop, where every time we reach that building, we get teleported back to the starting point? It's just my conjecture, based on everything we've experienced so far. So in other words, the loop hasn't truly been broken. This force is currently impeding our progress. But all three pendulum clocks have been shut down. What if there's a fourth one? What if there are more than three of them? Huh? Roni, have you found anything? Those three pendulum clocks are indeed interconnected by some mysterious force. But upon calculation... The energy they contain hasn't reached the expected threshold. Which means with the current Sapphire, there might be one or more things capable of controlling the rules of this loop. Could it be some hidden pendulum clocks? But I've been in Sapphire for so long, and have never come across a fourth one. Perhaps you consider another approach. Within this world, is there anything that's beyond the reach of the rules, apart from the pendulum clocks controlling the loop? My word had barely faded when all eyes converged on Himiko in unison. You mean... Me? Indeed. Miss Himiko is the only person we've encountered in this world who can remain unaffected by the loop. Speaking of which, I was so focused on breaking the loop that I totally forgot to ask how you discovered that you were in it. Perhaps because the events that would occur one day would happen again the next... And the conversation of those around me kept repeating as well. Can you remember when you first noticed that? I only realized the loop was there after quite some time had passed. And it took me a while to verify. So I can't be certain about the exact moment or place I managed to break free from the loop. As I dashed forward, the taste of blood in my mouth drowned beneath the pungent scent of gunpowder. In the frozen air, my body kept plummeting. Echoes resistant, guilt, regret, and self 
reproach reverberating through my mind. An idea suddenly took place in my mind. Kimiko had been in that alley. Perhaps that's where she broke free from the loop. Maybe we should investigate the alleys in Sapphire. Huh? Why the alleys? It's more of an instinct. I have a feeling that we might uncover something quite extraordinary there. However, time is running short. If the loop restarts, all our efforts might very well be in vain. So we can't put all our chips on the alleys. Ronnie, given the con potential connection between the pendulum clocks, you can use the available data to determine the whereabouts of the concealed clock. Oh, I got you. Well, it'll take some time. Shall we split up now? Yes. Since I've investigated Sapphire before, Himiko and I will head to the alleys first. Siren and Rita will join Brony in dial analysis here to determine the location of the hidden pendulum clock. The area blocked by the force became accessible only after the tampering of the three clocks. It might have something to do with the concealing or concealed clock. Please assured, Captain. Siren and I will ensure Miss Brony's safety while she analyzes the data. Hm. I'll take care of her. Hey, Captain. How about a little competition to see whether you and Miss Himiko find the pendulum clock first? Or we do. See you later, Brony. Hey, don't go so fast, Captain. Hmm. <laughs> Jumping the gun won't do you any good. I assure you, I won't be bested. Oop. Map. I'm looking for something very specific. I am looking for freaking this mission, ready to leave. With faint moonlight cast upon the narrow alley, I followed Himiko closely and kept looking around. What am I waiting for? What am I going to say to her if she really shows up? It's like I have a lot of questions for her, but I don't know how to start. But she's not here today. I shook my head, not knowing if I should feel relieved or disappointed. I started to look for clues as to the hidden pendulum. Ah, uh, no signs of a hidden pendulum. Nothing special here. Himiko? What? A crow swooshed past Himiko. Had I failed to pull her over, we would have run into a mob of monsters just for touching the crow. I was so focused on the pendulum that I almost forgot. Thank you. Her face suddenly tightened up. Himiko? Are you alright? Uh, one sec. I'm just checking something. Okay. Himiko. Huh? You know, in my memory, on that day and in this vacant alley, there's someone anxiously calling out to me. Thought me might be related to the stuff with the vampires. So I lift my hand and try to check the time, only to find my watch was going much more slowly than I remembered. And even creepier still was. I knew that there was something wrong with the time, and I was sure the watch was broken. But unconsciously, I had somehow taken it for granted. So the moment when you left the loop was when someone called your name. Himiko stayed silent for a long time when, while she stared at me. Himiko? It was you, wasn't it? Huh? The voice was you, right, sir? Wait. What did you just call me? You remembered everything now, Himiko? Hmm. Seems like a lot of things have happened. But I'm not sure that they're my memories. Perhaps certain things did happen to me, but I didn't experience them myself. Something happened on you, but you didn't experience it? I'm dead, aren't I? On that day, I... No. She was ready to die when she came here. At that time, 
It was Master Callan who told me everything about A872. But in the alley, she was the first one to soften up. She kept saying it was her fault. I didn't know what to say to comfort her. And you kept calling me. I was worried about you. And I regret not understanding what you meant when you were drunk on the rooftop. I was trying to find you. Come on, stop it. Making my mind was hard enough. And I'm not letting you talk me over. Uh, I thought I was ready. And that depth was but a moment. It was only then that I got to know that a moment could be longer than a lifetime. In that moment, there was my dad's smiling face when I was in Caltech at 15. The fiery passion of Valkyrie. And the smell of the breeze and beer on the summer night at 19. Master Callan told me to take the call. And that I wouldn't want you to live in regret. So I should at least give you a good, proper goodbye. But I only said one sentence over the phone. You think that was a proper goodbye? <laughs> You're still as childish as ever. I know you well. Your determination and stubbornness. So I said to Master Callan, Let's all end all this before old hothead gets here. Because I wanted to die a human. At least when you saw me, I'd still be how I looked when we first met. Himiko. I tried a million times to try to find a way to save all of you from that tragedy. Again and again, I'd reset the time and come here, hoping to achieve a different outcome through my observations and experiences. That's why there are so many different stories about you in my memory. Sorry, Himiko. There was no way to explain certain things to you back then. Even if you did, I might still find it hard to trust you. A suspected vampire. Looks like living in this looping bubble universe has opened your mind to some strange possibilities. So in the story where I died, the stuff with the vampires did occur. But in the world I now live in, they're only rumors. Yeah. Vampires exist in that world. But in this sapphire city, she... The vampire hasn't hurt anyone yet. There are any bite marks on the monsters. And no citizens became victims. The boy we saved mentioned the monsters don't usually hurt people. The reason he was attacked was likely because we confirmed what he thought about the vampire rumors. And it caused a change. Back at home, it was joyful dining. Monsters appeared because we tried to tell the waiter the truth about this world. If I'm correct, the monsters do not come from vampire infections, rather. They're a defense mechanism of this world. When outsiders like us appear, the defense mechanism of this world would activate to remove us. Sounds like you've got a lot of experiences with these sort of things. I've seen things like this many times. So what is truth about the vampire rumors? I'm not sure. Based on what we know so far, there probably isn't any vampire in the city. So the investigation only came from obsessions in my memory. No. There's no vampire in the city, but the vampire rumors didn't just pop up out of nowhere. Someone has been spreading them, only to keep people's attention away from something really important. You mean... The rumors are used to cover up the truth that the world is in an infinite loop? So your investigation on our wild goose chase. And we're getting closer and closer to the truth. Thank you, sir, for telling me this. Well, if I'm alive in this world, does it mean your observations have made a difference and changed the outcome? No. There's still unfinished business for me, and I've come here to settle it. It's about the vampire, right? Hmm. She might have turned into something I don't understand. But I made a promise to her. And I intend to keep my word. The communicator interrupted my thoughts. All again, a brony popped up the moment I took the call. Sorry to interrupt, but I've got good news. Congratulations to the genius hacker on winning the top prize in the Finding Hidden Pendulums competition. You found it, Brawny. You're amazing. It's right where we found the bubble universe was tampered with. Right, we saw the sun change from night to day there. 
Hey, Rosemary, stop nudging me. Brawny was nudged aside by Rita. Rita began to speak, while Brawny mumbled in the background. Has anything come out of your investigations, Captain and Himiko? Yeah, Rita knows something. Mm. Himiko just recalled everything, but she seemed to have multiple overlapping memories. And it might be related to me coming here to observe too many times. They're keen as ever, Captain. Just like he because overlapping memories. This bubble universe has generated parallel outcomes due to your observations. And that's why the Limon Himiko has the memory of falling down the alley back then. The coexisting possibilities have rendered the Sapphire Bubble Universe unstable. So, it needs to maintain stability through a loop. But who installed the pendulums and made the loop possible? You're still in the old habit of asking questions to which you know the answers. I looked up at the boundless darkness. In the loop, Sapphire has obsessively painted the heavens with the color of night. Why is the night in Sapphire so long? It was Is it because it was also a dark night when I made that promise? Since Ether Anchors are special to bubble universes, for this bubble universe, the pendulum controlling the city's loop is actually the Ether Anchor, right? Seeing that I switched the topic, Rita gently smiled and let it slide. Too early to tell. We can only say they're closely connected. After all, there's no Ether Anchor in the pendulums we've looked at. Maybe it's in the fourth pendulum, or maybe it's behind the barrier before us. Don't overthink. I'm sending the coordinates of the fourth pendulum to you. Wait, Brony. Before that, I have a question for Himiko. Huh? Me? No need to be nervous. I'll take whatever answer I get. Since you belong to this bubble universe, I think you need to know. This bubble universe is sustained by the loop. If the loop breaks, the bubble universe will become unstable again. You mean Sapphire will be destroyed right away? Not exactly. Just like the others, Sapphire's bubble universe will slowly decay into oblivion. It might take hundreds of years. I think instead of worrying about the remote possibilities, it's better to give the real living and breathing people in this world their lives back. Life should keep moving forward. Repeating the same day forever, that isn't living. Tomorrow, hope, and future. These words have been lost in this world for too long. So I must break the loop. I see. Contrary to my expectation, it only took Himiko a brief moment to accept the fact that her bubble universe would eventually die. Perhaps too many unusual events have prepared her for the worst. Since Himiko has decided, we should head to the fourth pendulum right now. Do, 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 do. Actually, I could just teleport. Why walk when you have teleportation powers? I remember being right here. Once again, we arrived at the spot where we witnessed the transition from day to night. The device still stood there. But this time, I heard this steady ticking sound. Tick. Talk. Tick. Talk. At its top, a delicate pendulum clock had been elevated. As we suspected, this is the fourth pendulum clock. Hello there. Can you hear me? Oh, Siren. You sound quite energetic. And yes, I heard you. We've located the fourth pendulum clock. But why are you and Rita the only ones here? Where's Brony? Well, she said she couldn't wait to see your downcast look, so she's gone to find you already. Ronnie's come to find me? He's definitely going to get sour because I outdid him this time. Hmm. <laughs> Childish. And Brony called me a kid. Thank you, Siren. Great imitation show. However, it's true that only Brony can hack into these pendulum clocks. Well, glad to hear those nice words you said about me. Well, did I arrive just in the nick of time? Yep, you're my lifesaver, Brony. 
I glanced up at the pendulum clock before me. Ambroni was expertly tinkering with her equipment nearby. It seems that only after the other three pendulum clocks are hacked does the fourth hidden one appear. Hey hacker, go ahead and do what you gotta do. We got your back. Himiko raised her sword, cautiously scanning her surroundings. Unexpectedly, this time, there were no monsters in sight at all. It's done. Now the hidden pendulum clock has been cracked as well. Brony, you're unbelievable. Don't forget you're looking at a genius hacker. We can enter the building now. Seems to be taking care of that pendulum clock. That's music to my ears. Sadly, it's not that easy. You'll know once you return. Yes, finally that mission is active. Enter. You're back. How did it go? Thanks to Brony's expertise and Himiko's protection, we managed to avoid being swarmed by those persistent monsters. We returned to the spot where we parted ways with Sirian and Rita. The barrier that once impeded our progress was now gone. However, the open expanse ahead was riddled with the very monsters that had chased us all the way. It seems all the monsters we missed on our way back are gathered here, waiting for us. Are we so very solely missed? Yeah, what a happy reunion. The music is getting intense. Since they're all here lying in wait, it means what we've done so far has been quite effective. So is everybody ready? Let me go tighten her grip on her weapon, her expression growing solemn as she focused on the impeding tough battle, or impending. Yeah, like always, let's get this show on the road. Oh, it's a boss level. Wait, isn't she's born? So I have to specifically obey. And over. Look. 
くやったね魔法の星をあげるBut our work is pretty much done. As the night fell, faded, the entrance to the tunnel nearby emerged in the sun. Things over here have come to an end, but our journey is still ongoing. Miko reached out her hand, trying to catch sunlight. It's a new day, right? Mm. With the pendulum taken care of, the loop will end soon, and the normal time flow will return to Sapphire. I imagined a million times how the loop would end. When it truly happened, it felt unreal. Relax. It's only a matter of time before Sapphire returns to normal. What's your plan? My plan? Nothing involving vampires happened in this world. But in my memory, Master Callan told me A872's reasoning. Well, it's for the Sapphire in memory. When the Sapphire in the loop now, I hope she can shoulder this responsibility. Sorry, Shirt. She must be important to you, right? Himiko, let's go stop her together. Huh? To be honest, I had been investigating her before this. The more I got to know, the more confused I became about her intentions. Maybe she had good reasons. Or maybe she was caught in a difficult situation. There's no excuse for her to run from her responsibility. As you said, she's important to me. So I'll face the consequences together with her and stop her before it's too late. Come on, Himiko. Let's get to the bottom of this. Yeah, after all, we were the best detective duo in the city. Sapphire's Holmes and Watson. Alright, all hands on deck. We need to hurry. There's no telling if she's going to stir up even bigger trouble. Heh. <laughs> Quit laughing like that, Rosemary. It's creepy. You miss important clues when you're too hasty, Brody. Following Rita's eyes, I saw a gleaming stone where the monster vanished. It would have been easy to miss if I wasn't paying close attention. That's another miracle stone. Let me see. Uh, it does contain the power to control the pendulums, but... It's not the complete Ather Anchor. Only a broken fragment. A fragment? So there are more Ather Anchor fragments in this bubble universe. Where are they? Arr... The sun plane interrupted my thinking, and everything in view became blurred. I tried hard to breathe and regain control over my body. Sir? Hey, what's going on with you? Everything faded away. I heard them calling me, and I struggled to tell them I was fine. But the sun agony de deprived me of my last little bit of strength. Human. It's you. The violent dizziness numbed my limbs, and once again, I was cast in the crimson mist. Hurry, go, Luna. Hurry, leave this place. Where are you? Where are you? Answer me! Her voice disappeared, and my world sank into darkness. Okay. I unlocked the bubble gun. Uh, let's see, map. So that's complete act one.
Let's do it. Locked over here device to cool them down. Hold them down past the challenge. Okay. That was simple. Sound liberation. Okay. Give me those power gloves. Sapphire, northwest corner of the orchard. With this is the orchard, right? Guessing once again wins the day. There's only so many combinations. So it's this, 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 this. And yes, I'm going to do a lot of the side missions. I see... No, do not reset. I have got it figured out. Okay, this one is going to be a pain in the ass. I moved it too freaking far. I have to reset the puzzle. Yeah, now I get it. 
the easier way to do it. I should be at the treasure. What do you mean getting closer? There are a few notes left behind. I was born amidst the night. The moonlight is my nourishment. My loyal companions follow my lead. Darkness shall reclaim the earth. How do we bring them out from fiction into reality? Gravity dawns on me that some of the more real it becomes in this world. The shadow flick of the cat's resting area. Find the mysterious marks in the path that are said to have been made when two vampires fall one another. You come back to play the part allow me to have the honor. Okay. I got nothing for that. I literally got a thing of notes. Yeah, the northwest corner should be there, so I have to go up and around. Actually, I could just teleport to the map. Like there. Okay, so I need these three. I messed up immediately. I need to do it in a very specific order. Okay, what is this note for? Talking about me when I walk past today. Master Thief. Understand loners like me. Okay. Northwest, and it has to be the orchard. But this here is the orchard, so Northwest would be there. Northwest corner of the orchard. So, do I go back through to see what happens? Indeed, I do. This is the orchard it was selling. I'm not leaving till I find wherever that is.
map is this the northwest corner actually is this whole thing the orchard I don't think so because I found one right here I see it up there. Spotted it. Which this is... Basically, I'm only going to continue the story once I've got all three of the things from this area. Is this the orchard one? You gave me the strength to live. Vampires believe in neither God nor fate. But you who came to me must be the biggest miracle in my life. I believe. We will meet again no matter how far we're apart. I'm too strong to cry. The last thing you see should be my smiling face. I don't care. I'll wait for you. Vampires live long. So we're best at waiting. I wish this with all my heart. To see wishes always come true. So we will definitely meet again. Okay, is that... No, that's not the orchard one. Ah, oh, northwest corner of the orchard. I see it right there. Oh my gosh, it wants me to go all the way around. Can I go under the bridge even? It's worse when you can see it, but you can't get to it. Because now I'm just going to be driven insane. Also, is that still part of the freaking orchard? Another swimming ducky. I've opened basically all, like, most of the chests in the area. I see. How do I get down there? Because I need to get to the water. That goes to the next area. Wait, is that not the one I think it is? No, that's still the same area. Strange things in the garden. Okay, that's cleared.
I messed up. So let's see, I should go up, down, there. Yeah, I should go up first. I freaking messed up because I was moving too fast. I also have to make it to the finish line. Okay, I can do this. I understand now. Oh my gosh. Wait, where's the finish line? That's the finish line? Okay, I'm actually trying to plot a course here. So, there, 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 there. messed up again. Why is this taking me so much brain power? How do I get the... get that one but I can't step on th that oh I think I got this That was annoying. This is not northwest of the orchard. Is everything you said true? Doesn't matter. I know you don't have to lie to me. But how? How did this happen? That person I can never... <sighs> I never believed in fate. But if this is the destined ending, I might as well end it myself. Finally! So, castle and sapphire suburbs. Which, there's still three more maps. Only two maps actually have those memory things, though. Uh, map. View missions. Keep going. Track mission. I'm going to be going for about another 20 minutes. Sapphire Suburbs. Did 
I saw the fire devouring the blood moon again. The fiery air drained the last bit of air from my lungs, and my legs couldn't carry my leaden bar body any further. But she's crying. The rampant flames consumed everything. My arms stretched towards her, burned red hot, yet my heart felt ice cold. I have to save her. Heat waves pounded against my chest as crimson flames blurred my vision. The searing tongues of fire nearly melted my outstretched hand. I must save her. Feeling anguish over other people's plight, you haven't changed a bit. Who's talking? A familiar fragrance wafted near, lessening the pain somewhat. I have heard this voice before, Rita. I remember your voice, but I can't recall your name. Don't worry about it. You remember what to do, right? I do, but I can't leave right now. She's still weeping here, right in front of me. I can't just leave her. Well, that's something you can solve after you wake up. Do you not trust me? No, I trust you. You're always so gentle and innocent. Well then, follow me, please. The perfume of rosemary drifted by, and the flickering flames receded until... The sight before me gradually cleared up. I smelled fog in the winds, and heard the crackling of a campfire at my side. Only then did I realize I was leaning against a tree. <coughs> uh, finally, are you alright? Being my coffin, Siren, who had been pacing around not far away, immediately came to inspect me carefully. I'm fine. I'm used to it now. Is it possible to get used to fainting? You're an odd one. Seeing that I was unharmed, Sin walked to the other side of the campfire with her arms crossed. How do you feel, Captain? I feel, well, pretty good. What about Brawny and Himiko? Where are we? Relax. Your questions will be answered one by one. We're surrounded by a fog and stuck in a forest. Sin shook her head impatiently. I looked up and saw the outline of a castle in the fog. Is that a castle? Could she be in there? A sharp pain radiated from my chest, causing me to bite my lips. For some reason, I had a strong feeling that I would see her there. Soon. She must be hiding in that conspicuous building, right? Ugh, I hate this. The castle's right in front of us, but we just can't find a way inside. That's why Miss Himiko and Miss Brawny are searching for a path to the castle. Rita glanced at Siren, then back at me, appearing troubled. There's something wrong, Rita. It's been ages since I heard from them. What? What's going on? Rita clenched the communicator and shook her head with concern, signaling she couldn't reach Brawny and Himiko at all. Oh, come on. Why don't you rely on some stupid machines to find the way? She calls herself a genius hacker? I shouldn't have bought that after she made that huge position error last time. I should go look for them. Oh. Captain, you've just woken up. You're not fit to move yet. Yeah, just stay there. She's right. You should get some rest. Rita, keep an eye on this guy. I'll go find Himiko and Brawny. No, I can't let you go alone. I'm counting on you, Miss Siren. Rita? My weak body couldn't keep up with them. Rita quickly a handed a communicator to Siren. The purple-haired girl took the communicator, waved to us with her back turned, and disappeared into the thick fog. Don't worry, I've already sent Miss Siren's location to Miss Brawny. She just replied that she'd receive her immediately. You said you couldn't communicate with her. What are you planning? So Himiko and Brony's signal were there the whole time. Whew. Did you send Sienna away so we could talk in private, Rita? The elegant witch let out a small sigh, but immediately resumed her trademark smile, as if I was imagining it. 
You've been quieter than you usually are on this journey, Rita. Is there anything you want to tell me? I'd like to hear your opinion on the situation, Captain. Situation? We're obviously trapped in a fog. We're still looking for a way to the castle. We don't know where to go yet, but we'll get out of this fog and get it into the castle sooner or later. Or so I believe. It is determined as always, even when our thoughts are trapped in this fog. I thought you were going to say Fuku. You're so optimistic and naive. Hey, aren't you going to refute that? Why would I? You're indeed optimistic and naive. You trust others unreservedly. Whether it's a strange girl who approaches you without notice, or an unexpected visitor who claims to be your enemy, you work with them open-heartedly. I think you got backwards. It's them who work with me, a complete stranger open-heartedly. The trust is mutual, I guess. To gain others' trust, you have to trust them first, eh? Maybe that's how you see it, but in reality, it's not that simple. Sometimes the person who we trust is just in our imagination. And that's why we feel betrayed when they reveal their other side. That makes sense. But your idea of trust isn't the same as what I believe, or want to believe in. Oh? Even if I know I'd see their other side one day, I believe I'd still choose to trust them. That's the trust I believe in. So d despite not knowing what you'll face in the castle, you hold on to this trust. Yes. I see. I gazed at the castle, shrouded in fog. So close. Yet, so distant. I don't know what she's planning to do, but I know she's waiting for me. Simple as that. I'm here to fulfill our promise. I hope I haven't kept her waiting for too long. I hope she won't mind me coming to see her this late. Or maybe she will. It's fine either way. Locating the bubble universe she's in took too long. Luckily, you locate her easily this time. Yeah, lucky me. A faint smile graced Rita's face. Amid the crackling of the campfire, her eyes fell on me. I feel like something was about to emerge in my mind. Before I could say anything, Rita spoke again. Assume everything has been resolved, and you have found her. What will you do? I never really thought about that. My focus has always been on finding her. Hmm. I'll take her to Home Rule to ride roller coasters. Well, that might scare her. In that case, we can ride a merry-go-round instead. It looks so beautiful when it lights up at night. One second thought. She's jumping, always jumping on and off of rooftops. So she can't be scared of heights. Oh, I'll also wonder the biggest homo doll we can find. But chances are she's better at gaming than I am. That reminds me, I should learn some moves from Brawny first. Future. What a beautiful term. Even though the moment it flashed across my mind, I had declared its unattainability. Its radiance still captivated me. When I thought of those things, I forgot all my pain. Your dreams are really uplifting, Captain. But before that, there's still many things I need to do. I want to ask her why she kept evading me. Why she did those things to the trees and different bubble universes. And why... Kongling must have discovered her purpose. And decided to leave the ship alone. I have to stop her before things get even worse. Rita simply listened by my side. Seeing me fall silent, her lips slowly parted. You know? Stopping is just one of the many bad solutions. Is that directed at her, who's trying to stop me from finding her by escaping to different bubble universes? Or me, who's trying to stop her from putting the Teresa's in a worse bind? Don't get me wrong, Captain. What I'm saying is, for things that aren't yet clear, any solution could lead to undesired results. Indeed, I didn't understand her purpose, nor what my actions might lead to. Especially when it came to resolving certain issues, it feels like we're tossing a coin with challenges on both sides. No matter which side lands on, things might not turn out as expected. 
But if the torn is caused enough times, it might produce a third result. You're saying, time and time again, I tossed the coin with bitter outcomes on both sides. Countless failures, countless frustrations. Amidst a sea of absolutes, I searched for the slightest coincidence. Finally, I tossed out a third possibility. During those wavering nights, I stubbornly ran after her. After countless attempts, we finally got what we wanted. And the girl who once smiled at me under the lanterns was waiting for me there as well. Kong Ming. Is it your past experience and that success that made you optimistic about finding the third possibility? Maybe you're unaware, but I'm not someone who can confidently face any situation. It's more like I've never considered giving up searching for a third possibility. When faced with two extreme outcomes, I see you're always so gentle and determined. In fact, for them, or maybe for us, you are the third possibilities to suddenly emerge in, in a dilemma, Captain. Huh? So please keep moving forward as steadfastly as you always have. Thank you, Rita. I'm supposed to accompany you to the third possibility, but I'm afraid I must leave you temporarily. Rita, where are you going? As she slowly stood up, the campfire's warm glow made her smile look even more enigmatic. Don't worry, I just have some personal matters to deal with. Once everything is settled, I'll explain them to you. I don't understand. That confused look on your face is so adorable. As she turned and walked in the fog, I instinctively tried to get up and pull her back, but I was too weak to do so. Rita turned back at the sound of my coughing and sighed resignedly. Seeing my breathing gradually steady, her expression softened a bit and her lips curled into that gentle smile again. Don't worry. This will all be over soon. Then she walked away, disappearing into the boundless fog. As expected, she didn't tell me anything. I'm so worried about her. I gazed at where Rita disappeared, then at the distant castle, hoping she and everything else would be safe. Hey, did you sleep well? Before long, Bro and the others returned to the campfire and greeted me casually. Where's that woman? The signals from Bro and the others didn't disappear at all. Dan, she did played me again. What does she want? Rita said she needed to deal with some personal matters. She left alone? That sounds like something she'd do. No worry. She's not someone who goes down easily. Why can't she just put our minds at ease? Did she say anything about those personal matters she's dealing with? No. But I'm sure she has her reasons for leaving. What about you? Did you find anything in the forest? Yeah, we found a note. A note? Himiko took out the note and handed me. The paper was unremarkable, but an elegant looking line was written on it. Those who enter the Forbidden Grounds, death will follow in their wake, shattering them until the end. This is a warning that bad things will happen to those who enter this forest. Interesting. Sending a threatening letter so yesterday. Where'd you find this note? The strange looking bat out there brought it to us in its mouth. A strange colored bat. Only then did I notice a small bat perched not far away on a tree branch. It tilted its head from time to time as it studied me with black beady eyes. Pretty unique, huh? You don't often see bats in this wilderness, and it's standing up right on a tree branch. If it wasn't for this little bat leading the way, we might not have found our way back here. Actually, my tracker also... Hey, do I need you to remind you at the time the tracker led us to a dead end? Well... Oh yeah, Captain, how are you feeling? Can we set off now? Thank you for asking, Brony. I'm fine. As I stood up, the bat on the tree branch flapped its wings and started flying ahead of us. Is it leading the way? Bingo! That's how we got back here. The little bat flew ahead of us leisurely, occasionally turning around to glance at us. The bushes rustled behind us, and the fog in front of us seemed to thicken. I don't know why the bat is behaving like this, but it's our only hope. Let's see where it takes us.
Well, that actually seems like a good place to stop. So, yeah. Where's the closest... Yeah, I can actually teleport right here. So, yeah. I'm gonna end the stream here for today. Anyways. We're learning more and more about the situation with Luna. So, thanks for coming to the stream. I hope you enjoyed. And I hope to see you again next time. Goodbye.